Hi, Chris Burns from Tiki Gurus. I'm excited to be back with you today. So I want to start off this week with a little bit of a story. So I was on a video yesterday, uh, it, was, it was a video chat with the FBI, and we were talking about how to engage law enforcement. And it's for my CISSP, it's how I earn continuing education credits. Anyway, I've heard so many, I've heard 40 a year. So they told a story about in Florida. Well, this sole proprietor who owned a small business um, got ransomware. And they came back and they they ran, they said, hey, you gotta give us fifteen million dollars. And then and the guy's like, I'm a single person. I can't even give you fifteen thousand dollars. And the threat actors came back and they're like, hold on, wait a minute. And about an hour later, they came back and said, oh, our our bet, you know, our our bed, we thought you were somebody else, and they just gave them the decryption key. <laughs> so they messed up. They ransomed somebody they didn't mean to ransom, and then they actually sent him the decryption key. So, granted, the guy's security is not great. It caused him a lot of harm. It cost him a lot of money, in, uh, even though he did get the decryption key. But it's kind of a funny story where somehow they were ethical, but not. So it was the first time that the FBI had ever had that reported. Uh, sticking with the FBI, last year alone, there was $4.2 billion lost reported to the FBI's um, crime division, Internet Crime Division. And 1.866 billion of that was business email compromise or email account takeover compromise. So you're probably thinking, well, how can that cost me so much money? A lot of it's wire fraud. So what they'll do is they'll come in, they'll get a CEO or CFO's um, email, normally CEO, and they will take it over send information about wiring money they'll look they'll look and try to find some information about hey maybe they're going to wire some money to this, this company and they'll send it and they'll change the wiring information they'll say you know what wire it here and it looks like it's coming from the ceo or it looks like it's coming from the cfo to like somebody else and a lot of times that money is gone it also could be ransomware uh because if they get in they'll take over your email they can find some information exfiltrate some data issue some ransomware and then you pay ransom so that's that's compromised but think about that out of 4.2 billion, 1.866 billion was just an email compromise. The next one was like confidence fraud, like romance fraud, and that was $600 million. So three times higher for business email compromise, um, which kind of floats me into some of my posts on LinkedIn this week. Last week, my email was attacked over 3,700 times. Now I put a map on there and I'll try to put a map in this video too just so you can kind of see it. It was all over the world. Uh, for some reason Vietnam was the number one country that attacked me. Not quite sure. But my email address was recently in a in a PII, uh, so personal identifiable information leak. It was about the company. It wasn't my passwords or anything like that. It was just my email address, company name, things like that. So I'm assuming that's why it's that's why it kind of went that way. Uh, but it's important. We monitor our email, we monitor logins, failed logins, we also block uh, access to our email from outside the country. And inside the country, it's open right now, I'm, I'm thinking about even doing regional blocks based on where I'm at. So a little bit more in, um, invasive for me, but it's all about the interest of protecting my email. Because my email obviously is my lifeblood, I can't have stuff going out to my customers or my employees as well. Something to think about if you're a CEO or an executive in a company. So. Let's go on to uh, Colonial, Colonial Pipeline. I, I, I did talk about this last week. I love Colonial Pipeline. This is a great story. The $4.4 million ransom they paid was only because their billing system was uh, actually hacked. They shut down the pipeline, not because the ransomware got there or because the threat actors got there. They did it, you know, for the good of the country, according to their CEO. But they did it because if they would have got to the operational, um, if they would have got the operational network, they could have controlled fuel flow and things like that. But the reason they really shut down was because they couldn't bill people. It was a billing system that ended up getting compromised. So I understand why they shut down. I'm not saying they shouldn't have shut down. It's just it's just interesting that the reason internal reason was more like, hey, you know what? We can't bill people, so we're just gonna shut down. If they did affect fuel flow, it would have been a bigger problem. So and let's let's cover one more thing. CNA Financial. They're one of the largest insurance companies in the United States. They have cyber liability insurance. They offer cyber liability insurance. In March, they were ransomed so bad and hacked so bad from a cyber attack that they had to pay a $40 million ransom. 
It's actually the, the biggest ransom by more than $10 million that's been paid in the last year. $40 million. It was so bad that they were locked out of their systems completely. They had to pay the ransom. They had no other choice. And they offer cyber liability insurance. So they're putting restrictions on companies and saying, you have to have this technology, this technology, you have to be doing this. But it doesn't seem like they're doing it on, on their network. Uh, something came out yesterday as well as Bose at the same time in March. March was a month of giving. Uh, they they got ransomware. Now they didn't pay it. They were able to they were able to bring the third party in and use their internal security team and actually get back up and running. But March was really bad. CNA gets ransomed. Bose gets you know pays forty million dollars. Bose gets ransomware. Is able to recover. Microsoft Exchange has a flaw that gets un unleashed and people are getting hacked left and right. Ransomware things like that. It just goes to show that this is not something that you just do sometimes. Security isn't a sometimes thing. Security is a cultural thing. It's, an, it's a continuous ongoing thing. Uh, yesterday there was a VMware vulnerability. It's 9.8 out of 10. When you get a 9.8 scoring system, that's really bad. I mean, it, it's super easy. It's, it's usually exploitable code without having to have any kind of credentials to do it. Um, Mac OS, if you haven't upgraded the latest Mac OS, absolutely go do that. There's actually uh, some malware that is able to leverage older versions of Mac and actually take screen, leverage other applications on your machine to take screenshots of what you're doing. And then they can exfiltrate it out. So um, iOS is another thing. If you're using um, iPad, iPhone, 14.6 just came out. Make sure you get up to it. There's been a bunch of exploits the last couple of versions where people could just have you go to a website and they could they could take over your device. So this is just like kind of puts me into like where patching and vulnerability management come in. It's cool that you patch Windows. It's awesome that you automatically patch Windows. It's awesome that you automatically patch <clears throat> Mac OS. Well, some people do, some people don't. You have to do this all the time. This isn't something you just pick and choose when to do it. Third-party applications are like one of the easiest ways to compromise you. It could be a browser, it could be an Adobe flaw for like PDF. It could be any kind of application that you have on your machine. We have to be vigilant. Everybody does. My company does, your company does, every security company does, every managed IT provider does. We have to be vigilant in patching, making sure that things are up to date, make sure we report on that. Also making sure that we can report on things like, hey, whose email is getting attacked? Who's logged into that email? Do we have multi-factor authentication on that email? The visibility we need in a network is critically important. It doesn't matter if you're a 10 user company or if you're a 100 user company or a 1,000 user company or a 10,000 user company. The visibility is still something we need. Just do the right thing. You know what, if you're looking at your business and you're worried about being vulnerable, if you're worried about Hey, is my cybersecurity up to par? Reach out to us, talk to us. I, we're here to help. Again, I've said this before, 10 minute conversation, I can pretty much diagnose a lot of things. We can go through a cyber assessment, um, just like, a, like, hey, how are you doing things? And I can kind of point out like where you're not doing things, and then we have a way of testing security. That's our big thing is testing the security you have. So even if you have a managed IT company, even if you have internal IT, test your security. If you don't know how, reach out to us and let us know. So until next week, uh, be safe out there, and I'll see you soon.